Hello everyone. So welcome to this lecture on Rangakuta methods. So I think in the previous lecture we discussed about improvements to Euler's method. Okay. While discussing improvements of Euler method, there was one thing I didn't discuss. Okay. That I am going to discuss now. So when you talk about Euler's method, Euler's equation, you will see you, you write down Euler's equation like this. Okay. So basically, which means this is nothing but y dash h. Okay. Now, if you write down Taylor series expansion, so we know that Taylor series expansion is nothing but so if you apply Taylor series approximation to this, so you can write down this is going to be so you'll notice your Euler's method is nothing but the starting part of your Taylor series. Okay, so that means if I include more terms, the accuracy of my Euler's method is going to increase. That means if I include yi double dash and yi triple dash and so on, that means the accuracy of my Euler's method is going to improve. But the problem here is if you see, you have to calculate the double derivative, the triple derivative and so on. Okay. That means there has to be some way with which you should be able to do this. Okay. And to do this, what we use is we use something known as Rangakuta method. So basically Rangakuta method increase, decreases your error or okay by approximating the Taylor series. So basically when you use Rangakuta method, you don't have to calculate the higher derivatives. Without calculating higher derivatives, you can attain the accuracy as that of your Taylor series. Okay. So when you write down the formula of your Rangakuta method, it looks very similar to Euler's method, but physically there is a difference. Okay. In Euler's method, this phi was slow, but in Rangakuta method, this is your Rangakuta method, formula for Rangakuta method. But in Rangakuta method, this phi is your increment function. And the formula for calculating this increment function phi is a1k1 plus a2k2 till ankn where a's are constant and n is nothing but order of your Rangakuta method. So basically this phi, phi is known as your increment function. A, A's are your constant. And when you talk about K, there is a formula for calculating K1. K1 is Fxi yi. K2 is Fxi plus P1h where this P1 is a constant and if you continue this you can say that Kn so this is the formula for calculating your K1, K2 or any given Kn okay. now by changing these values of a1, a2, k1, k2, you will get different types of Rangakuta method. Okay, so if you change this increment function, you will get a different Rangakuta method. If you change it again, you will get different method, and so on, different uh, Rangakuta method. Let us say if n is equal to 1. So when n is equal to 1, this is known as your 
first order rangakota method so i'll i'm using rk as short short for rangakota so if you realize when you substitute n is equal to 1 in this equation okay so basically this comes out to be what a1 k1 so basically if you if you substitute n is equal to 1 you'll realize that what you'll be getting is nothing but your Euler's method so what you have to do is you have to substitute n is equal to 1 and find out the value of this a1 this uh, p and q11 or whatever and you'll you'll find out that you'll get nothing but your Euler's method let us say if you take n is equal to 2 so when you take n is equal to 2 that is known as your second order Rangakota method okay so when you take n is equal to 2 this is the equation that you will be getting okay so when you substitute n is equal to 2 this is what you will be getting where your k1 is this your k2 is so this is your second order Rangakota method but the problem here is what is the value of a1 what is the value of a2 and what is the value of p1 and what is the value of q11 to find that what you'll have to do is you'll have to find out the Taylor series expansion okay and you have to then you'll have to equate this equation to Taylor series expansion once you do that you'll get equation of a1 you get this equation this is your equation number one you get another equation which is this equation and you get another equation which is this okay but again if you see the problem here is we have three equations this is equation number one this is equation number two and this is equation number three so we have four equations and three unknown so again it's a problem so basically what we can do here is we can fix the value of one of the variable okay and we can get different methods okay. so let us say if we fix the value of a2 is equal to half so when you when you fix a2 is equal to half what you will get is nothing but your Hune's method which we have already discussed the only difference is the method the Hune's method that we had discussed had a predictor and a corrector but this Hune's method will be without predictor and corrector so what you'll have to do is you'll have to fix the value of a2 so once you fix the value of uh, a2 half you'll find out from this equation that the value of a1 that you are getting is again going to be half and the value of uh, p1 is going to be 1 and the value of q11 is going to be 1 so if you take that you'll find out that your a2 is already fixed half so once you use those equation you'll find out the value of a1 is half p1 is 1 q11 is 1 okay and when you substitute the values this is the equation that you will be getting which is known as Yun's method also known as Rangakutta second order method where k1 is this and k2 is so basically what I am doing is I am finding the value of a1 p1 q1 and a2 we have fixed and I am substituting those things here in this equation I will substituting a1 I am substituting a2 I am substituting p1 and q11 so this is how I will get Yun's method okay now if you substitute a2 is equal to 1 or if you fix the value of a2 is equal to 1 
what you will be getting is the Bitcoin method. Okay. So if you fix uh, that and find out the corresponding values, you'll find out the final equation that we are getting is is this. Okay. Basically, when you when you fix a two is equal to one, the value of a one that you will be getting because a one plus a two is equal to one. So a one we are going to get one, and p one you are going to get the value as half. And Q11, we are going to write the value as half. Okay. Where Q1 is this, and Q2 is this. Similarly, if you take A2. We we'll get Ralston's method. Ralston's method, and again the value of uh, a one that we'll be getting is going to be one by three, and uh, p one is going to be three by four. Q one one is going to be three by So this is going to be the final equation of Ralston's method. Okay. So this is your Ralston method. In in the similar sense, if you go on fixing the value of a two, different values of a two, you will get you will get different methods. This was just the three methods. So this is known as your second order Runge-Kutta method. So understand one thing. I'll repeat again. This is your increment function. Okay, and this is What your increment function mathematically is, where these are k1, k2. So when you take n is equal to one, you will actually get Euler's method. When you take n is equal to two, and you apply a second order Runge Kutta. This is this is also known as R k2. Second order Runge Kutta method. So you will get uh, these three methods. Now let's move one step ahead. Okay. Now what we are going to do is we are going to take n is equal to three, which is known as third order Runge-Kutta method. Okay, which is R k three. Now I am directly going to write down the equation. The formula for third order Runge-Kutta method is. Basically, how you find out these values is just equate this equation to the Taylor series expansion, okay, and you will get this. So this is your third order Runge-Kutta method. Now let's talk about n is equal to four. That is known as fourth order. Runge Kutta method, RK4. This is very famous uh, Runge Kutta method. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, flavors of uh, fourth order Runge Kutta method, but the most important one is known as classical Runge Kutta method. So whenever you are going to say fourth order Runge Kutta method, what you are basically implying is classical Runge Kutta method. So the formula for classical Runge Kutta method is is this. So in most of the places in real life, you actually use uh, fourth order fourth order Runge Kutta method. Okay, where this is important. K one is so this is known as your fourth order or classical Runge-Kutta method. 
ओके सो इन रियल लाइफ मोस्टली यूल बी यूजिंग फोर्थ ऑर्डर टंग मैथड सो ना वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व वन प्रॉब्लम इन्वॉल्विंग फोर्थ ऑर्डर टंग मैथड आई वॉन्ट बी एबल टू शो यू हाउ टू सॉल्व बाई थर्ड ऑर्डर एंड सेकेंड ऑर्डर बट वन थिंग इज क्लियर वंस यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ यू सॉल्व इट फॉर फोर्थ ऑर्डर यू विल ऑटोमेटिकली अंडरस्टैंड हाउ यू हैव टू सॉल्व इट बाई थर्ड ऑर्डर एंड सेकेंड ऑर्डर रंग कोटा मैथड एंड सो विल बी सॉल्विंग द प्रॉब्लम यूजिंग क्लासिकल रंग कोटा मैथड 